Hello and welcome back to the podcast bros. As always, it's me, Avijra Sumargi, and with me... It's Oshul Sumargi. And today, we are going to be talking about John Wick 4. It's our movie review of the month, right? Yes, and this is going to be heavy spoiler. We are not going to hold back on any details. So, yeah, viewers have been warned. And if you haven't seen the movie, please do check it out and then come back to it. If you guys don't worry about the spoilers and those kind of things... Then, yeah, soldier on. John Wick, either way, not a lot of spoilers, right, in the movie. It's an action-oriented yeah. movie and all that and all. So, yeah, tell us some of, something about the movie. So, John Wick 4, the fourth movie of the John Wick saga. And yeah. uh, the directors, the director is Chad Stahelski and written by Shay Hatton and Michael Finch. Mm-hmm. So, basically, John Wick is now on the run yeah. again. Yeah, on the as always, yes, huh? yeah. <laughs> but this time the price on his head is very huge, and the entire high table wants John Wick dead. Yeah, or dead. it goes all the way up to forty million, huh? Yeah, yeah. And so he's on the run, and and this movie is global. You know, it's shot in many p- places like Japan, Berlin, and yeah. uh, New York as well. So. Yeah. Also, sorry to interrupt, but uh, the highest budget of any of the John Wick movies, right? Hundred bil- hundred million dollars yeah. for this. Yeah. yeah. So, and you can see that it was utilized very mm-hmm. properly. But yeah. So yeah, John Wick on the run, and everybody wants to take him down, and uh, so pretty much that is pretty much it. You know, John yeah, Wick yeah, wants yeah. to be free of this underworld life. He came back, but now he again wants to get out, and for that to happen, he has to kill them all. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that is. You know, it that's the short synopsis of the movie and the action. Yeah. Uh, John Wick. So basically, the question that like comes is, will John Wick, the man of infinite like will, will he be able to outrun or outdo the high table, right? Yeah. Or will he die in the process? No. So it's a very intriguing topic. And the other fun thing is, it's like that's the kind of plot. Of almost every movie, you know? Mm, yeah. <laughs> will he die or yeah. will he able to be, like, will he able impossible. to win? Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah, some of the, I mean, like, yeah. So, let's get into the action of John Wick, right? And this one, heavily laden with tons of action. There were some action scenes that went on for, like, 20 minutes, you know? Yeah. And not boring, right? So, not that boring. that is, a like, incredible feat on their end. And this is the fourth movie. And we know what we get when we go to watch John Wick. Yeah. Right? But still, we got the... Like, we weren't bored. Almost I mean, they yeah. haven't disappointed from the first movie. Yeah. You know, the first movie was a surprise. You know, it was a fresh, you know, thing to the yeah, actions, yeah. action scene. But uh, then it, it kept on getting better. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this movie is the peak, you know. Yeah. So... Uh, from like we can see how the movies have escalated right so some of the kill counts in John Wick like John Wick 1 had just 84 kills and we are saying just it's still crazy but still you know 84 kills John Wick 2 128 kills John Wick 3 was 94 a little bit lower because John Wick 3 was also setting up the whole world also right and to be like more transparent to the viewers we did watch John Wick 1, 2 and 3 before watching John Wick 4 Right, so we kind of did some of these counting on our own as well, you know. And John Wick Four, approximately 180 kills. Mm. Oh my God! This movie was action packed yeah. from the beginning. From the be- oh right to the end. Yeah, yeah, and they grip you from the start. Yeah, right, like the desert scene, you know, mm. like and we were talking about this, and I was ask like I was ta- asking Oswald well, like how do they put him in the desert? Desert, mm. right? And they start off from the desert. Yeah. Right, and then they kill the great one. Yeah, they kill the person who sits above the table. Yeah, the elder, right? The off, elder, sorry, yeah, yeah, right off the start. Yeah, the, and that just gets you like on hook. the edge of your seat. Yeah. yeah, from the very off, right, and amazing, and a lot of um, biblical references in this movie as well. Uh, for example, Cain, John, you know, all these like biblical references, and even at the start, we see John Wick punching the thing and there is Dante's Inferno being what do we say quoted Quoted, right like as the Bowery King is coming into the scene Mm. and he's quoting this thing so lots of like uh, biblical references even Lance Riddick's character Sharon 
Yeah. Even that is also a biblical name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the guy who takes the dead people across the river mm. and takes them there so that they can be judged whether they'll go to hell or heaven. Okay. So this is the main like Sharon is that kind of a character in biblical references. So let's get into it. Some of the characters and Lance Reddick, we did talk about him. R.I.P. to Lance Reddick. He did recently just pass away and at the age of 60. So... You know, and he had done incredible work in TV shows like Wire and other like amazing movies and TV shows as well. I do not have a lot of uh, knowledge about his acting work, but I did know about his Wire past. But yeah, the great one, right? Yeah, the, the great elder or the great concierge. one? No, uh, oh, you talking about the elder? The elder, right? So the elder gets killed. Five minutes later, Lance Reddick, who is the concierge. Who has been such a rock yeah. in John Wick's side, the uh, like a pillar of trust, dead, dead, and that was you know I had to give it off to the movie. That was a bold move. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, mm. even though it was sad to see Lance Riddick die, Sharon die in the movie, yeah. but that is a bold move, you know, taking yeah. killing off like such. A, he's been in the movie from part one. Yeah, and he's dead. Yeah, and he has been like there is a passionate fan following behind him. You know, because he's just been this like amazing character throughout every movie. And we don't get to see him a lot. Yeah. But every time he's in the scene, he chews up like the scene, you know. Mm. So, yeah. And who are some of the other characters that you really loved? Rina Soyama. Yeah. All right. And she was Akira, the manager yeah. of the Osaka's Continental. The yeah. daughter of uh, the Koji. Koji. The character Koji, Koji yeah. yeah. Who was, you know, the father of the manager of the continental so but then her character you know only stayed in for the first few minutes of the movie yeah, but yeah. then did make an impact yeah, yeah the yeah. action scenes and uh to see his her father die yeah, was, yeah, yeah you know impactful scene from her I her action like her scenes action were good movie. right yeah her action scenes were really amazing right she was really and they did try to you know smack home the point that you know this japan and they use the bows and, yeah. and all that. that was good they did make good use of that yeah and for a lot of people like we did not know who she was rina swayama or akira for the movie she apparently happens to be a japanese singer japanese and british based singer okay right and i think this was her first hollywood role and i think she did really well she did you know? well. yeah for a singer to do her own stunt and like perform so well I think, and hold her own against John Wick. Yeah. Like, because in the action scene in the Osaka Tower, uh, where the Continental is, uh, her action scene holds up pretty well. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And with the heavily armed guards as well. And with know? that, I expected her to stay for more scenes in the movie, but then they did not do that. Yeah. That was okay, but... But the post credit scene. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like... I mean, the thing, this, the thing that this movie has done is obviously they've you know, kind of completed the John Wick saga, but they've had, you know, they've left some characters yeah, so that yeah, they can yeah. do multiple spin-offs and, yeah, you know, they can expand this universe more. Right? Yeah. Did you know, uh, apparently this, what's her name? Uh, Anna de Armas. Mm. She's getting a spin-off of John Wick, like, uh, in the universe of John Wick. Yeah, which she, is, can, she, can, she can do action, yeah. but... That was surprising. Yeah. Okay. So apparently she'll be one of the ballerinas. Like she will oh. be from Russian or Belarusian Ruskaroma. side. Ruskaroma. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the other standout was Hiroyuki Sanada as Koji. Like we said, uh, uh, Akira's father, who happens to be the main head of the Continental in Japan. Right. He is always amazing and in his roles and of course action packed role as yeah. always. So that was amazing, and but I did not understand why he sacrificed himself, you know, in the movie. Yeah, they they did try to show him as a friend of old friend of John's yeah, yeah, yeah. and one of the closest friend of John's. So that is why he sacrificed. But then, you know, we did not have that kind of yeah, connection yeah, yeah, yeah. because they did not mention him before earlier anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but he does sacrifice for his friend. Yeah. And with that, that's why I also felt sad for Akira. Yeah. yeah. And in this movie, John Wick is, you know. Uh, that's you know what do we call it he where, wherever he goes he brings death see you know this is what I was thinking so there is this character Harbinger yeah. so generally Harbinger are people or like our messenger of God that announces the death right and I thought in this movie John Wick should have been named Harbinger right mm. because throughout the whole saga of John Wick 1 through 4 
whoever he goes to either Things their like situation completely deteriorates yeah. or they die yeah you know so yeah harbinger yeah. would would have been a good name yeah. he's got many names bhaviyaga ba- the death yeah, the boogie man emissary or something yeah. but harbinger <laughs> would have been <coughs> donny yen yeah what do you think about donny yen as gain this is the second time donny yen has been uh what do we say called up to do a blind person who is great with action he's done this in uh, one of the star wars okay. like franchise movies as well uh, so yeah he was great in his role of course he killed his part all the action was really important but uh, i think he was used as a plot convenience a lot yeah. because every time like so we'll get into this but the marcus doesn't fight right which was kind of disappointing but even for that the justification was that like his daughter could have been killed so you do this and initially when he gets hired he's like okay so you have to go and kill john wick like the marcus tells kane to go and kill john wick and then when kane disagrees he's like no i i'm not going to do this he's like i'm going to kill your daughter so that means no matter how many times he says no they can always say i'll kill your daughter and he'll always have to come back yeah they can make him do anything yeah. so it wasn't a very substantial plot behind kane but kane himself as a character like how he could stand toe to toe with john wick and not just that his friendship with not just uh john wick but koji as well yeah you know whom he kills like it sets up like you said right it sets up the world so Nicely, openly yeah. that like you could go anywhere with the whole john wick franchise but yeah who who else who else the oh, man. Yeah, what did you think about kane yeah kane i found him pretty interesting obviously the blind factor and the action scenes he you know killed that part yeah but again at the towards the end which we will talk about he turned out to be a little bit of a upset for me yeah, yeah. not him but the what they did with his character yeah, yeah, yeah did turn out to be a little bit of upset so same thing so donnie yen good 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 acting and good action scenes as well yeah, yeah. and the way he utilized i i wish they would have done this more because he was blind so he was also setting up initially in the first action scene he was setting up traps so if like somebody passes through that oh, trap yeah, then yeah. you would hear the noise yeah, yeah. and that was a doorbell ringing yeah, which was a was funny fun. thing you know but and then he would shoot them or like he'd kill them so i think they could have utilized that a little bit more as well like played into his blindness a little bit more but either way like and it, even it served also the to mention the introduction to his action scene where he's like nicely the yeah, yeah, chaos yeah. around him but he's nicely enjoying Eating, his meal yeah. <laughs> yeah. that was also fun yeah and bill skarsgard as marquez that from the beginning uh, but the moment from the moment he killed sharon from and then till the towards the end this man was intimidating in yeah the uh, uh he seemed like a perfect match for john wick but yeah, towards yeah, the yeah. end you know it does not go as planned as we thought yeah, 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 yeah. but what did you think about marquis i mean the way they he they set him up i like the, the scene where he puts the knife through nobody's hand right mr nobody's mr. hand nobody yeah yeah gave me joker vibes and he was also the clown from it the movie yeah right like the pennywise right so he's got that sort of a smile yeah, yeah, yeah. And, smile. and the look as well like it's even when he's not speaking and some of the smirks like he he was acting at his peak you know and it would have been so much fun to see him go toe to toe with john wick right because throughout the movie one thing we see is that like he is very rich the way he is dressed every setting he is sitting in it's so rich talking about the suits oh my oh. god i mean after every different scene that man was wearing shiny yeah. good suits and that was you know yeah. was really nice oh that like you know it also gave me the thought of how much can be done without saying or like without just the way he was dressed was so intimidating for like imagine if you were mr nobody entering to this person and he was dressed that way and he was in this impeccable place where like horses are doing all these different dancing things and all that you are like yo bro yeah. in a way i'm nowhere close to him you know like it's just so intimidating in a different way like it almost emasculates yeah. you you know so that was also pretty well done and man. nobody mr nobody we will talk about him after this bill scarsgard but what he was trying to do when he met 
Marquise was. He was trying to, you know, get yeah, the yeah, offer. Yeah. He was trying to negotiate and he was trying to intimidate Marquise. But yeah, yeah, yeah. he just could not. The way it know? plays out, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh. He, Marquise first acted like he was getting... The, he was, yeah, he was feeling the pressure. Yeah, 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 but then he just take brings out yeah. a knife and then oh, that was brutal. Right? And uh, to the credit of Mr. Nobody, he doesn't shy away from the challenge as yeah. well. You know, he stands up to the challenge. So that whole scene was also pretty... The way it seemed like slowly, 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 slowly escalates and then it just... You think like... It'll, because it's going at a steady place, pace, right? Like it's escalating in a certain level and then it goes zero to a hundred real quick. Bam! Right, it escalates all the way up, you know. So that was, and then the hand check at the end uh-huh. with the cut hand. Ah, yeah. oh, right, like that was fun. That was fun. And Samir Anderson as Mr. Nobody. Your thoughts? I think besides the Bari King, again we will get to him. But I think he was the weakest uh, link in the movie. Yeah, weakest character with no sort of, uh, you know, substance in the character. Yeah. Uh, so, but then he is set out to kill John Wick mm. and he wants the money and he's got a dog, obviously. There's no yeah. John Wick without a dog <laughs> yeah. in the movie. But he's got a jo- dog and he does not yeah. impress, impress. Almost like he was being thrust into the movie. You know, he was put into the scene. So, like we said, the whole movie is set up in such a way that like you can take the John Wick franchise into multiple places and it's done very organically, right? But this, the whole Mr. Nobody thing, I thought was more like, okay, so this is also something that we want to do. Please like it, audience, you know, please enjoy him. And he was being thrust into everything. And even at the end, when the shootout is happening, I don't know why he's there. Yeah. Like, the Paris accent scenes, right? Basically does nothing. Does and nothing. you know where it was fun? Where I thought it could have gone in a different way where in Japan like somebody sneaks up on John Wick and John Wick could have died and he saves John Wick so that arc could have been fun yeah. where he was like he saves John Wick till the time John Wick like price goes really high and then he and John Wick face off and then something happens but that yeah. never happened there was also you know? a time later in the movie where he saved John Wick's dog yeah and then he gets real he realizes that John Wick I don't know, want to kill yeah, John Wick. Yeah, yeah. John Wick saves his John dog. Wick yeah, yeah, saves his dog, and then he should have. And then there's this scene where he's almost about to die. John Wick is almost about to die, falling off the stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I thought Mr. Nobody could have come and saved him. Yeah, yeah. But it was Donnie Yen. That I don't know right. why Donnie Yen came in that place. It was not even suitable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donnie Yen should have been ready up there, ready to fight. But Mr. Nobody, it was Mr. Nobody's perfect time. Yeah, to at least give him some, you know, give us something. Yeah, yeah. I I think if he would have come in then, and even Donnie Yen, uh, we don't mind three people fighting, yeah. right? Like it would have been yeah. fun action. But he should have stepped up first, and then when it got more impossible, then Donnie Yen should have entered, you know, so that they all could go get to the top of the stairs in time. But if he would have come at that moment, I think he would have been so much more enduring, you know? So after John Wick saves his dog, basically he does nothing back, you know? He does not give anything back to John Wick. So that was basically a meaningless scene of realization that Mr. Nobody had. Mm. That was meaningless. It did not pay off. But it was just like you said, they tried to set off, you know, the character and the universe and all that. And he was just one person thrown in there to see if it could work. All right. This was someone that I really liked. Scott Atkin as ah. Killer, mm. the thick German guy, right? Mm. And Scott Atkin, if you see him, he's a thin guy. So he's basically wearing a fat suit and he oh, is, is yeah, an American. So he was doing a uh, uh, German accent. But the whole scene was also pretty fun. You know, the way it plays out, the way he set up the game. And already the like, at the end. Yeah, right. And then the way everything is set up and he's running. Initially, once John Wick gets the upper hand, but when he's fighting with John Wick, you see that even though he's a thick boy, you know, he did put up a good fight. Yeah, it was fun, and then the whole setting was also pretty good, like a dance club that was like insane. So, yeah, the whole and the thing, uh, one thing, another thing, the details in this movie, like the Scott Atkins, right? He was showing off his golden teeth yeah, from yeah. the beginning, and then Rusko Roma did ask John to get a proof, proof yeah, of. Yeah. Proof of death, you know. Yeah. So he just breaks his teeth at yeah. the end, and then he that's the yeah. proof of death. Yeah. So yeah, Scott Atkin was also pretty good, and he had a very thick 
over the top german accent yeah. but i think it worked in his favor and the Now, whole scene yeah the disappointment fun. i think we yeah. both felt this character was a disappointment and it's the bowery king lawrence fishburn yeah insignificant totally yeah yeah i mean he did they did build him up okay in the third part at the end because yeah. he's the one who saves john wick and then there's this whole saying that are you pissed john wick but then he does nothing yeah. and then they brought him just for a couple of scenes in the movie yep. Yep. to hold a suit and that was basically disappointment yeah. i expected something better from that character but yeah for the people like at the end of part 3 he yeah, like in the middle he gets slashed seven times uh, as penance for helping john wick escape right so when john wick falls off the continental of new york uh, who is shot by ian mcshane's winston character right and it's up for debate whether that was full betrayal or oh. wh- whether that was a show of betrayal but actually helping yeah. right so that was a question mark but uh uh bowery kings people get him get john wick to bowery king and then they both like talk out as if like they are going to wreak havoc on the table, the table. right but and they did not get redemption for the seven cuts no nothing so there was basically nothing that this character did mm. for the movie or for himself yeah and now super disappointed yeah. and not just that let's b- give the audience a little bit more right the dialogues for this character uh. throughout the whole four movies oh my god whoever wrote the dialogue dialogue for this guy was pretty bad at his job every dialogue every laugh was so misplaced and it was so it wasn't for him yeah, that character laugh wasn't was, for him you know it was not yeah it, it did not suit the movie <laughs> every time like come on man yeah that was perfect <laughs> yeah. maybe they should have hired me man <laughs> and, but you know i'd also like to stress the point that he boasts on about himself so much as the yeah. king but then we do not get to see the power display anything but winston you know he also boasts mm. but then we do get to see yeah. power displays from him you know it's suitable as the manager of continent yeah. but no display of anything that you know matches the significant boasts. no yeah, exactly. significant display of power on bowery kings and like he doesn't all let's put it this way the all he helps john wick do is find refuge sometimes yeah that's basically it nothing mm. else you know but okay let's get into it then ian mcshay as winston what did you think i mean throughout the saga for the four movies he's done a good job mm. being the continental's manager and you know having a power of display and he's been basically working in this field for more than 40 30 years yeah, yeah. and that has had made an impact him and sharon the yeah, the lance riddick yeah, yeah. the two combination was good and even his and john wick's combination you know he always yeah, had a yeah. thing for john he always jonathan jonathan yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah always treated him like his son yeah. and then always saved him in the times of excommunicado and yeah, yeah, yeah so i like the character as winston and is also his thinking in the third at the end of the third movie where he gets to keep his post yeah, yeah, yeah. but also either betrays or save john again mm. that is debatable so this was uh, like a open debate between me and ashwal like we were talking about this and ashwal was of the point put your point forward yeah so basically in the towards the end in the third movie so winston and uh, john wick are against the high table mm. and towards the end they parley and now winston gets to keep his post as the manager uh, but then he kills john wick mm. he basically shoots john wick a couple of times the suit has armor so he does not kill john wick so he su- uh, shoots him in the body but then john wick falls off and then it seems like he massive is, fall yeah it is a massive fall yeah <laughs> and then it seems like it, it seems like john wick you know winston betrayed john wick and yeah, high yeah, table yeah. has given him his post back and that's what i thought you know he's betrayed john wick mm. but but my thinking was that you know throughout the whole like first okay let's put it like the first two movies the way winston talks about john wick is like you never bet against john wick right yeah. and at the moment when and they also kind of give a little bit of justification in part 4 but in part 3 at the end he does shoot john wick right and uh if he would have wanted to i think he could have shot john wick straight to the face or some of the places where the armor wasn't but he does shoot john wick where he could be protected so in that way he can show the table that he no longer wants to be a part of john wick but doing that like shooting was proving a point to them but like not shooting john wick lethally 
was like, hey, I'm also kind of trying to save you. Okay, yeah. like save both of our asses so that you can escape and I can get my post back as well. And uh, in the part in part four, he does say that like there was no other option, right? Like we had to do something and that was the only thing that we could have done in which both of us could have like maintained our thing. And uh, this was a point of like question mark even uh, for the director, Chad Shahatsky, uh, Sahatsky, Salatsky? Sahelsky. Sorry for butchering the name. <laughs> but yeah, and he's directed the, uh, I think, one more previous part as well. So there was a point of question mark there where uh, Salatsky was uh, taking my side of the argument, but John Wick, Keanu Reeves was taking Oswald's side of yeah, the argument. Because I can you know? agree with your shooting in the body part yeah, yeah. because, yeah, you do not lethally kill him. But the fall, oh yeah, my yeah, god! Yeah. You know, you cannot, you still cannot explain how John Wick survived that fall. Yeah, he has a couple of tumbles. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and then so that is what Keanu Reeves. Yeah, you know, point. Is talking yeah, about. Yeah. So how do you expect him to survive the fall? Yeah. So that was my point, and then you know, we had yeah. a discussion, but then eventually it turned out Winston did not betray him. He did he just saved. I mean, his like, life. okay, let's uh, let's not give a definitive answer. I think like, more like nobody knows. Right, like, and oh, yeah. we cannot get into the head of Winston or like John at that moment. But and they never really hash it out in part four. They just like dust themselves off and then like, and they just, just move continue on. like they are friends. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, it was a question mark thing. But okay, these were most of the side people, characters. Yeah, yeah uh, people that were really fascinating. And let's talk about Keanu Reeves. The the boogeyman. Yeah, the Baba Yaga. Huh? I mean, I think without Keanu Reeves, this franchise would not have gone this long yep yep and, and he's obviously the surprising thing is the john wick the character john wick only has 380 words throughout the movie yeah and it's a two hour 40 minutes movie yep, yep. and he only has 380 words, words in total That's, right yeah and basically he only says yeah yeah and then he only has one or two liners i need a gun yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is we don't even have a problem with that Cameron yeah Reeves does so good in that part. yeah, yeah, yeah. there's so much that's unsaid, but expressed, mm. you know, and we can feel it. So, like, it's able to hold your attention enough. And you, before the movie started, I did tell them that, like, Keanu Reeves doesn't even have a lot of dialogues, right? And I'd seen a little bit of a non-spoiler reviews for the movie before we went in. And I did tell them. But throughout the movie, we did not feel like there was less dialogue on the end of Keanu Reeves. Yeah, because he did speak only 380 words, but the action spoke yeah. a thousand yeah. words. Yeah, oh, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah. And yeah, and I don't think there is a John Wick franchise without Keanu yeah, Reeves, yeah. you know. And I think this uh, whole, what do we say, franchise was ma made for Keanu Reeves, yeah. you know, and people went to see because of Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves and Keanu Reeves himself as Keanu Reeves is such a wholesome character, yeah. you know, like, so people love him just, you know, just because, and he's been in the movie business for ages, right? Like even the Ma Matrix franchise, mm. he was yeah. the lead in that four yeah. movies, five movies. So if the, he's multiple franchises on the back of Keanu Reeves and he's been able to hold Deliver. it together, right? He's been delivering. Ah. And Amazing. it is sad to see now, maybe, yeah. maybe the Keanu Reeves franchise come to an end. Yeah. But he did give his best and he gave us something good. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. To look back on like John Wick 1, 2, 3, 4. It was really and I wanted enjoyable. to say this. And uh, my brother was also saying this. Avi Madras Sumargi, shout out. Uh, but at the end of the movie, he was telling us that like Keanu Reeves did look tired. Mm. Right. At the end of like the whole movie looked a little bit tired of the whole thing that was happening and uh, for the people all of this part one two three it took place within a month right yeah so this is just the kill count that we gave you earlier i think we'll put it up again that's just a month of killing for this dude yeah, <laughs> yeah. but what i'm trying to say is that like maybe it was acting or maybe maybe it was real because it is Taxing. Keanu Reeves is 55 plus yeah. years old, you know, and he does most of his stunt on his own. So you could see that, right, reflected. And maybe he'll want to come back into the franchise later on. And we have some theories about that. That will be coming soon. But, but yeah, yeah, I mean, he did bring up that point. And that was kind of, you know, I Apparent. didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, not everyone is Tom Cruise. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Keanu did his best and he did, you know. But yeah, then maybe yeah. it was the acting because this was a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. And then 
so and then he's fought off so many mm. guys from the beginning so he's, he has a right to be tired yeah, yeah, yeah so but and part 3 and 4 were shot back to back okay you know so there wasn't a lot of like maybe he's just that good of an actor <laughs> you know that he was or maybe it was real but either way it it worked and he dies oh. he dies at the end of the movie oh annoying so what does that mean for the obviously that was you know kian all praises for kian reeves but what does that mean for the entire saga of john wick 1 to 4 what do you think about the story not the action but the story you know it okay so there is two way you can look at it the one was he was able like he'll go down in legend in the universe that is uh the continental and all this thing he was already genre, a living right? legend yeah. but now so you yeah. were scary beforehand but you was the only person that was able to put a mark on the table and basically stand up to the table and say i'm not playing your game you know either play either let me go or i'm going to come after all of you yeah. and he did shake the whole what do we say establishment yeah. from top to bottom right so that was really really interesting but on the flip side it also felt like a selfish vindictive narcissist going about his business and didn't care who he hurt along the way or whose like life he would impact or who he would get killed so i don't know which side i fall on definitely a good saga mm. i did enjoy it mm. i mean i agree with your point there because i do not care about the high table people getting killed mm. but the people like his friends that were getting affected like yeah. hellberry there and koji uh, yeah the koji and all these other people mm. that were getting affected because of john wick that was sad, sad to yeah, see yeah. and lawrence uh, frisburn as the bowery king gets slashed because of john wick and the whole continental gets destroyed because, because of john, john wick, wick. and you also know? the ruskaroma yeah. does get her hand chopped yeah. because of john wick john wick right so like tons of things lead and and uh, uh ruskaroma's head who was supposed to be the father that uh took uh orphan john wick into their uh, care jordani you know He dies, he dies because of because John Wick. Because he's related Wick. to John Wick. He's right. the closest relation to John Wick. Right. So you see that there is a trail of destruction. So harbinger, right, of death. Not just killing, but because of his action, other people getting killed. You know. So, yeah, it was a, it was a, thing that like in hindsight that when you think about it, it was like ah okay. That is sad. Yeah, but of course he will go down as a legend and. to be fair i don't think we need to like to be fair to the whole john wick franchise the story of it i don't think has that much significance yeah. because even from the first movie right we see it's just for a dog right and then the second movie is just for a car you know and then in the third yes excommunicado now it's for his life but from early on we've always seen that like it's always a very simple story and it's given to us within the first 20 minutes of the movie that like this is the reason why this all is happening and they'll pull it out yeah. for the whole two they hours they don't want to stress on the story point so much mm. because they have so much to do with the action and from the beginning because they do try to bring the wife point as well throughout yeah. the saga but then it does not matter so much for us for as the viewers you know after movie 3 they did take a little bit of a leeway uh with the whole great one coming into the picture and you know the elder yeah the sorry the <laughs> the elder i keep saying the great one but there was a little bit of a leeway and it wasn't like the first two movie was one of the reason why it was so intriguing and the third movie uh like predominantly majority of people say is not the strongest of the bunch even though it did you know with yeah, the one yeah, to three even though it did good financially but then yeah. yeah yeah but they did take a little bit of leeway and even in four the way john wick approaches everything it did shy away from the table being as strong as it was claimed in the first two movie but i think eventually john wick will need to come back and we had talked about this as well right like how could he come back right and there are theories to it which we'll discuss a little bit but uh, our conclusion was either they need to do a prequel where john wick younger version where he was building up his legend mm-hmm. as the boogeyman you know that or we couldn't see any other way 
Yeah, exactly. I think that would be good. That I would watch that one. Mm. You know, John Wick. I don't know who would act. Maybe Keanu. I don't think. No, Keanu I think it could be Keanu. But there will have to be a lot of CGI and all that. Yeah. So it's still up, up, up in the air. But the even uh, director Chad, I'm not going to say his last name anymore. <coughs> he was like, we need to. I think we need to take a break from this John Wick franchise. But the universe we will expand it with tv shows and all the other things mm. but for the time being john wick john wick is going to be dead yeah. he is dead he has uh, shown in the movie yeah. and now if he if they bring him back from the dead that would be super disappointing for me <laughs> to be fair ashwal let's put it this way and this is with my conspiracy hat on you know if you do not see a dead body like completely dead body in movies they tend to bring him back they are, they will always find a different explanation to it and they'll bring him back yeah, okay you know okay. so but they do show his grave yeah they do show his yeah. grave so that uh, either that is part of the whole act right of like and it, winston and the bowery king both seem genuinely distressed right so it, it could be that like they're just playing their part and he could come back again later when the time comes i guess but as of now it feels like john wick is dead and this is the reason why i bring this theory up is because keanu reeves when he was asked in the q and a with his fans he himself like the fan asked so john wick is definitely dead huh and then keanu reeves response is is he maybe that was a, maybe he's being sarcastic but still like that always leaves the door open so yeah. that means and that generates excitement right so and like we said about John Wick stories, those are not the point oh, of emphasis. That is nice. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I do agree with that. Yeah. So they could give a flimsy reasoning and John Wick would always Yeah, come obviously back. he could be back and everybody would be excited. But that would be just the minor, you know, disappointment for me. See, okay. So this is also what I'll say. Uh, Keanu Reeves, uh, as of late, has been not getting a lot of roles. His acting has always been a little bit suspect throughout his career. Right and when the money dries up, this door is always open. So if he finds some different roles, because you if you see some of the other Keanu Reeves roles as well, the acting is very similar, you know. And he gets typecast and all that and all. And generally, he has not done any comedy. And some of the romantic movies that he's done, it was back back in the day. And most of the other movies that he did were always action, you know. So if but. But on the flip side, Keanu Reeves has his own comic book that mm. is going to be made into an action movie, right? So maybe you could... Keanu Reeves has his own comic book as in he wrote the comic book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget the name. Berserk or something like that. Okay. But yeah, so maybe that could lead into something else then. And then he could maybe permanently close the John Wick chapter. Maybe come for like cameos as younger versions of him, you know, or something like that. But uh, yeah. So, so yeah, that was that with the John Wick conspiracy. But yeah. now the other conspiracy that we talked about was Winston. Winston, huh? Yeah. S- go on. Yeah. So Winston it does seem very powerful in the movie. In yeah. the entire four movies, he does seem very powerful. And we thought that just, you know, but then he does mention that he's been in the industry for 40 or 30, no, 34 40 years. years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he has the experience and he has the knowledge and everything. But he does seem overly powerful, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. There's this moment in the f- second movie where he is excommunicated. John Wick is excommunicated and then they are in the spark and he, the entire Yo! What a move! comes to a halt. What a move, right? Yeah, and then he says, because I deem it so. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, it yeah. does show his power. And so with that, even when uh, the excommunicado like mail is going through, the number is 1111, right? And if we see somebody else's like uh, table number, right? Like this is their identification number code, right? It's not close to one. Yeah, it's not. It's not that special of yeah. a number. Even the Santonio Di Antonio, the yeah, second, yeah. the second part, he is the m- member of high table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he also doesn't have, have that, that kind, kind of, of a special number, number, right? And so, th- 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 like, he seems significant, you know, somehow. And the only person to get his way in the movie. Mm. Like all four 
and Winston is one of the characters that I would love to watch a spin off of mm. you know continental in its own and Winston yeah i never thought about that yeah. right that could be such that a could be because i am ian mcshane he did a good job yeah Winston. so basically what we thought about the conspiracy was that maybe winston is something more than just a manager mm. the, the, of the continental either like one of the maybe founding members of yeah. the i table yeah yeah or maybe something very powerful mm. or holds a post of something that powerful or maybe has a family in the yeah. i table so it could be any number of reasons and we would like to explore winston a lot could he be related to somehow the the great one the what the elder but the, the, elder. the elder is dead the, but like uh, we saw the elder being dead in this movie as mm. well and the previous elder from john wick 3 being dead as well yeah. so we see we know that the elders get replaced quickly if like basically it's a never ending cycle right like if one go- goes then it goes but it's then like the a presidential post yeah 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 so yeah but yeah definitely you've got my mind rolling there about thinking about like imagine uh early like first year of winston being the manager of the continental and or like five years in and we can also get to see the concierge right that and then a young lance frederick right yeah. and then we can get to see young versions of a lot of assassins a uh, young ver- uh, older versions of a lot of uh, like we can get a very good understanding of the high table and how the world works right from his tv show yeah and i think it would be better as a tv show rather than a movie because then we get to be extensively in that like 10 hours worth of entertainment in that you know so yeah the the thing that this movie did so well was it in itself was a good story and a good end to a good chapter but okay now it's set up so much you know it, it has so many branches that can be touched and can be explored right winston the other assassins so waiting for the spin-offs yeah, yeah, yeah. and landsgate you know they are so excited i think mm. they want to do a Did you say longs longgate landsgate ah landsgate ah. yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah what did you hear no i did hear landsgate but you remember when we were in the theater and i was going to say landsgate oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> longsgate yeah. yeah so landsgate are pretty excited to do a john wick 5 but i don't think the director and can reason yeah, offer yeah, yeah. but they can obviously expand on this universe yep yeah, yep yeah, yeah uh so as of now uh john wick 4 has made 146 million for 100 million one two weeks in yeah, yeah. uh dollar movie and i don't think it has any threat until the next marvel movie comes into the picture so i think it can still earn a lot and then i think people will be clamoring to watch it on the ott platforms at, as well so okay ashwal give it to me rating of john wick out of 10 overall i would give it an 8.5 8.5. Yep, yep, and yep. the 1.5 gets lost in the stories, plot conveniences yeah, and yeah. some of the other unanswerable questions. And yeah, the end does lose like 0.5, a yeah, big yeah, 0.5. Yeah. So what about you? Yeah, 8.5 as well and yeah, we did not talk about the ending because it is an intense scene and it it has a little bit of a twist twist to it so we did wanted the audience to experience that on their own but most of the things we've kind of Talk. gone through but yeah 8.5 pretty much the same reasoning as well because some of the plot conveniences and some of the way they handle some of the things but all in all great watch 2 hours 40 minutes did not feel like it you know you were so engrossed in it and action from head to toe right like early on and yeah everything bang 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 and bang an honorable mention Yeah. Lot of crowd shots. Crotch shots. So much. Oh Not shots. I mean yeah. there's something the director was up to something. You know, if I was one of the members of the high table, I would have a totally female like <laughs> staff or you could just have a guard up there. Yeah. You know, oh, the yeah, L guards, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But tons of crotch shots, not just crotch shots, crotch bites from the dogs, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so and not just in this movie, like throughout the movie. And it is understandable, one of the weaker points of a human body, especially and for males. From the assassin's point of view. Yeah. yeah Either way, you have to kill, right? Like you both are fighting for the death. So however you can survive, you go for it. So yeah, Ashwal, bang. <laughs> just to be ensured you know this is taking of the future as well yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no more generations of assassin coming from this line you know <laughs> oh my days but yeah so that was our 
uh, review of John Wick 4. Uh, great franchise did leave an impact on the movie scene and I think it will be remembered as one of the greatest action movies of all time so that's that now let's get into it and I know this video is a little bit longer but we also wanted to do the 10 most anticipated movies of 2023 yeah. we were planning to do this from the beginning from yeah. the, you know from Jan or Feb but then we like somehow didn't yeah, happen yeah, yeah. and so for the rem remainder, of, remainder of the year we've got some movies yeah, that yeah, I yeah. think you should watch and we think that you know it's going to be exciting yeah yeah and some of these movies will be coming out in march right and like we're, oh sorry uh early april or late march so like today is the 30th but from tomorrow on like some of the movies are also coming out tomorrow so you guys can maybe and uh, not anticipate but get excited about some of these movies so ashwal and i have curated a list of five five movies each on our end and we've got some blockbusters but we've also got some uh unknown names or like some yeah. things that are one to look out for. yeah yeah but might be exciting uh so yeah let's get into it so i'll start off with my list and it begins with across the spider-verse mm. the sequel to spider-man into, into the spider-verse Spider yeah. and obviously everybody basically enjoyed spider-man into the spider-verse and then the direct directors you know there are a couple of directors in there uh, like kemp powers justin k thompson mm. and all and i like the fact that you didn't go for the full name just because you wouldn't butcher them yeah, but <laughs> I, I do not want to get into that. <laughs> so the release date second of june so yeah. watch out for the all the animated lovers and basically superhero mm. lovers the other one but, a little bit oh yeah, uh, yeah. into the spider verse really uh stand out right when it came out nobody expected it to do really amazing but it did hit majority of different kind of audience variety like it was made for younger kids but also the adult loved it so i think and i think it's in safe hands so i think this would be yeah, a and fun by movie the to looks of out. the trailer they are introducing a lot of characters yeah 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 so many characters so let's see how they play with that yeah and now the other one mission impossible dead reckoning Ugh, excited so I mean, excited. mission impossible movies have not disappointed and obviously tom cruise at the top of that does not disappoint mm. christopher mccurry and tom cruise power couple right now in hollywood so most of the movies now Tom Cruise does is with Christopher McCurry. So yeah, I think I think all of you have already seen the jump off the cliff scene yeah. that they've bragged on about so much. So let's see how they do with that. And yeah. as he mentioned before, you know, I don't think that's the selling point of the movie because yeah, yeah. they've got to come up with better stunts, you know, mm. because we've already seen the whole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they've got to, you know, but then I hope. Yeah, I, I think, think they've they got things up their yeah. sleeves. Yeah, yeah you I think know? they will. So the release date for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, and this is the first part. Mm. So this is a two-parter. So the Dead Reckoning is part one, and then the other one is also, I think, being shot back. Yeah, yeah. So this one is coming out on the 14th of July. So yeah, that is mm. it. And July being summertime. Yeah. Yeah, and summertime, everyone's free. So yeah, even the spot is nice, huh? Mm. Yeah, so yeah. vacation time, and like they're hoping a lot of people go and watch it. Yeah, another one that's coming out on the 21st of July. And this one is a banger. You know, I do not know how to put that. You know, I was trying, another to, trying to go for something banger, else. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I was trying to go for something else, but it's Oppenheimer and Christopher Nolan. Yeah. We are huge Christopher Nolan fans. Mm. And this is another one. And this is basically about the Manhattan Project and Christopher and uh, Robert Oppenheimer, mm. right? The father of the atom bomb. So, we recently watched interstellar mm. just for it just for the just sake for the of sake it, of it. yeah and the great movie the, the, that's how yeah. much we love like you know nolan. Chris nolan yeah so the cast it's a star started cast and yeah. i wanted to mention about the cast in this let's one hear some names kieran murphy Ooh, peaky blinders, peaky blinders. It yeah shall be in itself so emily blunt another great actor miss matt, poppins yeah matt damon jason bourne but, yeah jason bourne yeah and iron man in there as oh well. my robert god Downey robert jr. dowry jr yeah and the new black widow florence Pugh, mm. and the Bohemian Rhapsody, the the Rami Malek. What is the name of the singer? Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury. Yeah, yeah. Rami mm. Malek. So, pretty much star, star started. started. Yeah. Twenty first yeah. July. Watch out. So the other one, and this is oh. another one we love. We watched it multiple times, and this is Dune Part Two. Mm. So fear is the mind killer. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. So the director, obviously, Denis Villeneuve. Mm. Villeneuve. One of my favorite directors, yeah. you know. And we didn't get to get into it about John Wick Four. But cinematography is very important when we are watching a movie. And this guy always kills with the cinematography. Yeah, the, the, it's, it's a peak. Yeah. So, so the cast, again, uh, kind of started. Mm. Timothy Chalamet, obviously the main person. 
uh, Rebecca Ferguson as mm. the mother and uh, Josh Brolin Thanos obviously mm. and Dave Bautista and Zendaya in there as well. So this is coming out on towards the end 3rd November mm. of this year. And this one, you know, I'm excited because being a DC fan and watching all these Marvel movies peak Do so well. Yeah. yeah. So it is kind of sad and now I hope with this movie DC is back where it belongs and it's the Flash. Who is the director Ashwal? Can you give me the full name? Andy the bros andy <laughs> <laughs> andy machetti yeah machetti. i think that is how it goes so the cast obviously ezra miller ezra miller is kind of controversial person yeah, yeah. so and then you know this one is interesting because it's apparently it's resets the whole universe the mm. universe and it's got a couple of batmans in there michael keaton coming back and yeah, there's yeah, got supergirl yeah. in as well so the release date 16th june excited <coughs> a lot of movies coming out this summer huh? yeah so that that's what I was going to mention right like and you pointed it out that's amazing that summer time seems to be the main spot and then winter time right like so uh, some of the movies that we've mentioned either november right or june july Ju- july june and some of the movies i will mention as well either it's like right when like summer is coming up or it's winter time mm. so, you so they basically go for the holidays you yeah, know yeah, the yeah, summer yeah. and then towards the winter when it's christmas and all that yeah yeah so that was my list, you know. It's it's pretty much all blockbusters. Yeah. But now let's go with the ones to look for. All right. So some of the uh, more quieter ones that are coming out, and these are some of like the more unknown movies uh, that people should maybe check out. So the first one is Sixty Five, right? Uh, it's being directed by Scott Beck and Brian Woods, and the actor is Adam Driver. Adam Driver, of course. Uh, I forget, well, like he's in the Star Wars, uh, the new Darth Vader. I forget the name. Oh, my days. That's so bad. Look on us. But yeah, so Adam Driver, is he was an ex-Marine. So he's got a like massive fan following, just loyal Americans, you know. But he's a good actor as well. And 65 is a movie, uh, from what we've understood from the trailer, is that uh, it's more like a Star Trek kind of a thing where... Uh, this interplanetary species of humans are exploring the universe and when they're exploring one of the ship gets wrecked by a stray asteroid yeah. and they get stranded in a planet earth-like planet right and no no, no what they're trying to prove is they did land on planet earth yeah, 65 yeah, yeah. million years ago yeah, yeah, yeah so what like so basically the human civilization and how it came to yeah, be yeah. right but yeah so, so and in the time that they're in the planet before the help arrives from the other like places where they're actually from they have to survive and it's like a thriller survival horror kind of a movie and i think it could be really amazing it's a sci-fi movie as well so yeah do check it out it will be coming out late march so it should be coming out today tomorrow all over the world and yeah i think people will enjoy it so, uh, so yeah tomorrow being friday i think it should be releasing a lot of places and then the next one and this one I am a little bit excited for Dungeons and Dragons uh, Honor Among Th- Honor, Honor Among Thieves. This is uh, a movie based on a tabletop game of Dungeons and Dragons. It's a very famous game in America and a lot of people around the world play it as well and it's a fantasy movie and it's got people like Chris Pine, Michael Rodri- uh, Michelle Rodriguez the uh, awesome one of the members of the family yeah. you know from <laughs> Fast and Furious yeah. so yeah it's it's got a good starring cast and I think it's a fun movie uh, this is also coming out late March so do check it out I think for the fantasy lovers out there I think they'll have a good time uh, and it's also uh, categorized in the comedies so okay. I think it'd be a fun time out with even your kids and all that and it's a PG-13 movie so I think yeah you can take your kids and all that along as well the next one that is coming out is Guardians of the Galaxy 3 Uh, I did have to include this because this is the last foray of James Gunn in the Marvel Universe Mm. before he takes over the helm as the main head of DC and James Gunn of course the starring James Gunn directing the starring cast is Chris Pratt uh, the hunk Right, who yeah. everybody loves, Z- uh, Zoe Saldana, uh, uh, Akoye, Akia, what's her name? Gamora. In, no, Gamora is the this one, but in Avatar, I forget oh, yeah, her yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, she's also the main leading actress in the Avatar franchise. And Bradley he, Cooper, huh? Yeah, Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so he yeah, does the I boys. Uh, in, in in the same vein, we can also say what's his name, the other member of the family, uh, uh, Vin, Diesel. Vin Diesel. So he's Groot, right? Mm-hmm. So Groot. 
gets paid millions yeah the oh. I am Groot. Give me some money, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah. yeah Dave Bautista again. Yeah. In this as well. It'll be coming out May fifth, so early summer time, and yeah, uh, something to look out for. I think this would be a fun one as well. Uh, the next one. and this one i'm a little bit excited for this is a different take so there have been a lot of uh, so the movie is wonka and charlie and the chocolate factory yeah charlie and the chocolate factory and this is the third iteration of the charlie and the chocolate factory we've seen one in the 70s or 80s i forget the actor's name but then the, uh, in the early 2000s johnny uh, depp johnny depp did the willy wonka and the Ch- uh, chocolate factory and then now this is timothy shalame Shimia, Shimia. Mm-hmm. so yeah so this is the actor that's going to be leading the role and paul king I hope he can live up to his name and really provide us with some amazing film. I have seen Timothy Chalamet with a hat on. I think yeah, he's yeah, posted yeah, that yeah, picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm excited because yeah, Timothy yeah. Chalamet is a talent. Yeah, 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 he's a good talent. So let's see what he does with that. Well, one of the best up and coming actors of our time, and yeah. this is, he has done multiple different kind of roles. So we have seen him in action comedies, uh, dramas, and all that and all. So we know that like this guy can really pull it out of his, you know. breaches anyways uh some of the other people olivia colman she is an oscar winning actress rowan atkinson mr bean mr bean right in yeah. the movie and michael uh Keegan-Michael yeah Keegan-Michael the Keegan-Michael Keegan-Michael guy. yeah kian yeah. peel guy so i think it's going to be a fun one as well and when is this coming out again surprise december uh 15. holiday time yeah. you know so december 15 2023 and this one this one i'm a little bit excited for the pope's exorcist right and it's a horror movie i did wanted to put at least one horror movie into this and i was kind of surprised that it wasn't coming around halloween time right mm. because it, being an american movie this should have like maybe come out in halloween time but yeah so it is being uh directed by julius a- avery uh not related to those uncharted movie characters but <laughs> but starring russell crow and yeah i think it, this would be a fun one russell crow so as are you not accent. entertained yeah yeah gladiator of course uh russell crow and really amazing actor but he's put on a thick i think italian or spanish accent and basically this is based on real events but just based so it's not actually the it's facts been some or time. something hasn't it? we haven't watched a proper horror yeah, show yeah, yeah. or a movie yeah and so the exorcist movies like uh, generally tend to do a very nice job the exorcism of emily rose it was 70s, really good right? uh, no that's the exorcist okay. right so that was the 70s one okay. and we watched it and it still holds up yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and exorcism of emily rose that one was a good movie as well so i think this one could be a fun one as well and do check it out it's coming out in april 14 2023 so i think that would be the fun one and that is the end of our list hope you guys enjoy some of these movies and do go and check it out we are not sponsored by any of these by the way yeah. so yeah if you want to support us please do directly <laughs> <laughs> yeah But so again towards the end of the year let's you know we'll also do a top 10 yeah yeah movies movie of the year review, movie you know which we liked and all that yeah. so this was our top 10 most anticipated movies of for the remi- remainder of this year 2023 yeah. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for tuning in, John Wick Chapter Four review. How did you like it? I hope you guys enjoy. If you had some uh, comments or if you guys had some other interpretation of the movie, please do comment it down in the comment section. We will be there. And for some of these anticipated movies, what are your some of the anticipated movies? Do give give us a shout out about those, and we would check them out as well. And anything else to add, Ashwal? Yeah, do let us know what yeah. you think about the review. of the John Wick and also about the anticipated movies yeah. and if you've got any uh shows or movies yeah, or, yeah, yeah yeah so do let us know and i think that's it yeah and are you still batman for this episode yes yeah <laughs> i'm always the batman <laughs> anyways uh, peace, peace.